San Remo's first foray into home espresso and oh my god it is gorgeous but what is it like to use and would you want to part with thousands of dollars to have one in your home well I got to play with one last week and I'm here to answer all your questions about the San Remo cube San Remo is very popular and they have machines in cafes all over the world. In fact, I think my sister's cafe in Cambridge has a San Remo Zoe, if I'm not mistaken. They've put their commercial machine expertise into a much smaller box and I wanted to see how good a machine they could make. After all, I am looking for the perfect upgrade from my single boiler. By the way, massive thanks to Daichi Denkasha for letting me into their Tokyo showroom to film this video. The first thing you'll notice about the cube is how beautiful and compact it looks. What a stunning and unique design for a home espresso machine. My friend who came along to help me with camera work even mentioned as we were going into the showroom, wow, this one looks really cool, before he realized that, that was the one we were there to film. It just has a marvelous finish and a very premium looking body compared with the industrial look of machines like my Sylvia or the other very popular machines like the Rocket, ECM, Lilit, or Profitec machines that also have heat exchangers. It's also whisper quiet, which is really nice compared to what I'm used to. In a lot of home machines, you'll hear a whirring or vibrating noise when you pull a shot, but this machine just sings. Also, the lever that you use to pull an espresso feels really nice, as if there was someone at San Remo whose whole job it was, was to feel the subtle resistance and say, yeah, that feels nice. I also really like the design of the dials that you turn to turn on the steam or the water taps. They come out at slight angles that line up beautifully and keep the nice lines of the machine. Let's talk about one of the things that is most important to me, which is the steam power. Seriously, this is one of my favorite things about this machine. The steam power was perfect. That steam power is really strong. Of course, as subscribers to this channel will know, I've been using my Ranchilio Silvia for quite a while now, so I'm used to not having quite enough steam. But on the San Remo Cube, every milk I steamed after the first one was perfect for latte art. I'm sure that with a bit more time to get used to it, I could be making some amazing latte art, and it made me feel like I'm so hampered by the machine that I currently have. Now, that doesn't mean that the steam wand is perfect. I would have liked a little bit more of an angle of motion, as it is a little bit close to the machine, but the power is on point. As for price, it looks like the cube will launch at somewhere around $3,400 US. Although in Japan, I reckon that'll probably be around 600 or 700,000 yen, which is a little bit outside my price range. Shad face. I do recognize that the price might be a sticky point for some because at this range, you could probably get something with a little bit more data like the decent D1 Plus. It's even approaching the price of maybe a refurbished linear mini, which is a lot of people's dream machine. It is a lot of money to drop on an espresso machine, but I do think that San Remo knows its market well. Part of what you're paying for with this machine is the design and form factor, and it would just fit so much better in a home or a small cafe environment. Now there were a few small issues that bugged me. Nothing deal breaking, but I wanted to let you know my thoughts. First, I didn't find the app all that useful, although I guess over a longer period, it might be good to be warned when there's something that needs maintaining or fixing inside. It has a water tank level warning, but I just feel like I wouldn't be opening the app to use this every time I pull a shot, especially when there's an automatic shot timer on the body of the R model anyway. Also the timer on the app is a little bit weird. It updates in irregular increments, like 0.3 or 0.4 of a second, rather than something more regular like 0.1 or half a second at a time. This is an easy software fix and I hope they implement this soon. The rubber grip for the steam wand was probably the part I had the biggest issue with. It has quite a narrow rubber part for moving the steam wand into your jug, but once you start steaming, even this part gets so hot that you might burn yourself touching it. I already use a cloth to move the steam wand in my machine now, so it's not like it would change my workflow that much, but on a machine this price, I would have liked to see an insulated steam wand that you can touch at any section, or at least make the rubber part not get as hot as the steam wand itself. The drip tray was also a little loose. A lot of drip trays have a little hook or something to make sure that the drip tray doesn't slide out, but this one just kind of nestles in place, so when I went to wipe it with a towel, I have to hold the drip tray to make sure it doesn't slide out. Perhaps some magnets would do the trick? Also, I luckily noticed while I was at the showroom that when the tank is empty, it just stops trying to pull water from the tank, which is great. My machine just keeps on trying and it makes this scary whirring noise that makes me think I've broken the whole machine. The display reads low when you're trying to pull a shot and there isn't enough water 
filter in the tank. Obviously, I wouldn't want to make this mistake very often, and I usually check my water tank before I pull a shot to make sure there's enough water in there, but it would be really nice to get this low warning when there isn't enough water in the tank to pull a shot. Overall though, it's hard not to like the San Remo Cube. It makes fantastic espresso, it has steam power for days, and it is one of the most beautiful coffee machines I've ever seen. Honestly, I know this is subjective, but it might actually be the most beautiful home espresso machine out there. I'll be looking for an upgrade as soon as I've put the money together, and the San Remo Cube just jumped to my top three list. If you found this video useful, go ahead and give it a like. And to know more about which espresso machines are best for home espresso lovers, click here to see more of my videos on that. And I really want to know what you think about this machine. Are you thinking of picking up a San Remo Cube, or do you think there are better options at this price range? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you on the next one.